Happy Monday, everyone, and what a what a great Monday it is. First of all, Cat Tip is back from her honeymoon. Yeah. It's good to see her. She looks fantastic. <laughs> you can tell she enjoyed her time off. <laughs> looks like she put on some weight. <laughs> But also, as you know, it's my birthday. Yes. And like ensure pumping through Joe Biden's bladder, the accolades are pouring in. He's an extraordinary man. He is a remarkable human being. I love him. He's a legend. He's a legend. He's an immensely He's so talented. Smart. He's, He's so immensely smart. talented. He is very charming. Talked like a dude. You know, he is such a, a visionary as a writer. He's a very, very, <laughs> very nice guy. Very polite, charming. He's funny. He's hilarious. We love him. Great broadcaster. In short, he's a living legend. He's adorable. He is. <laughs> he might be the sexiest man alive. Come on, what he does with his life and what he's done with his I life. I like it. Yes. Yes. See, okay, unite everybody. And I'd like to thank everyone at Fox for all the great gifts I received. And thank you, Sean Hannity. I love the wheels. <laughs> And Tucker, you know, I always wanted a Rolex. And thank you, Brian Kilmeade. But really, one of your kids? <laughs> <laughs> I'll promise I'll take care of him. But my biggest present of all, Brian Stelter got a job. And it didn't involve Jeffrey Tubin's hand. <laughs> yes, the unemployed Oompa Loompa was hired by Harvard to hold discussions on threats to democracy. I only hope their endowment can afford the threat to their plumbing. <laughs> <laughs> to paraphrase that guy in Jaws, Harvard's gonna need a bigger toilet. <laughs> <laughs> but if he gets... <laughs> but if he gets 20 students, that's more viewers than he had at CNN. <laughs> but now when teenagers call him on his lies, he can actually fail them. So what makes Stelter an expert qualified to teach at Harvard as opposed to, say, a stapler or a bag of loose nickels? He's not, but they take care of their own. He was their useful idiot. His idea of a threat to democracy was just a threat to Democrats. To Brian, those threats were you, Trump, and maybe salads. And really, the only ocracy that threatens them is a meritocracy, because based on merit, Brian would be working at Taco Bell instead of blocking their drive through at 8 a.m. <laughs> Just wait like everybody else, Brian. But you know what they say, those who can't do, eat. <laughs> no, it's eat. <laughs> so first, so first, Harvard hires de Blasio and then Stelter. So who's next? Could it be Alec Baldwin? <laughs> I mean, there's a class that will definitely need a trigger warning. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Brian's only gonna do at Harvard what he did at CNN, is push the message that you guys are dangerous, that you guys are terrorists. And he's not alone. If you watched the liberal media yesterday on September 11th, you would have thought it was 19 members of Mar-a-Lago that flew into the Twin Towers. If only Chuck Todd could wonder, are we now as a nation battling a threat from within, a threat equal or greater than what we faced after 9-11? We're now as a nation battling a threat from within. Is the threat <laughs> equal or greater than what we faced after 9-11? And there's an oath that we always take, which is to defend and uphold our constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Oh, that's like two yoga balls interviewing each other. <laughs> and her answer was emptier than her pantsuit. What is it about pantsuits? Kamala, Hillary, Michael Jackson. <laughs> when you see someone in a pantsuit, you should probably run. And the mainstream media wonders why people hate the mainstream media. It's because the mainstream media hates you. You might go to church, drive a car to work, or ask why your kid's teacher has a goatee and a vagina. <laughs> but you're the freak. But this nonsense is easy. It's just like hating the royalty, because anything that poses a challenge to the media's authority must be crushed. 
If you really think about what the monarchy um, was built on, it was built on the backs of black and brown people. She wore a crown with pillaged stones from India and Africa. And now what you're seeing, at least in the black communities that I'm a part of, um, they want reparations. As beloved as she was, she also represented an institution that has a long and ugly legacy of brutal colonialism, violence, and slavery. Ah, uh, who doesn't? So what's this all have in common? Well, it's an attempt to destroy any shared moment because a shared moment competes with their political opinions. But love or hate the idea of monarchy, it's a role that exists independent of ideology and provides a measure of calm when things get rocky. It might be nice to have that here, and maybe we do. <laughs> Good luck uh, wedging those asses onto a throne. <laughs> but, but England still takes this stuff seriously. Did you know that there's a royal beekeeper who by tradition was required to notify the palace hive of the queen's death? I guess they didn't want them to read about it on Buzzfeed. <laughs> I should have taken that out, right? No. I should have edited that out. But it's too late. It's in, and you guys saw it, and I'm humiliated. But I never got into monarchy. The closest I came was throwing up at a Royals game. <laughs> Thank God Quisenberry loaned me his hat. He played for the Royals. But I valued the sentiment that brought a country together. Maybe it's what America might be missing, something that unifies us other than Pornhub and pizza, especially in times when the media and their woke heroes try to tear us down like a statue of Abe Lincoln. Maybe America needs its own royalty, not just a president, but perhaps a king. Perhaps Piers Morgan was right, and he's an expert in British royalty. He might have the answer. I keep reading that you are now the king of late night TV. That's so true. in a way, the American <laughs> monarchy now rests on your shoulders. You are the king. Now, I'm not sure I can handle the responsibility of being a king. As Joe Biden said, heavy are the pants that wear the crown. <laughs> <laughs> But if I do become king, I've instituted a line of succession for the show in case things don't work out. Should anything happen to me, the new host will be Hans. Uh, he'd do great. I've known him for years. But if he can't fulfill the duties, next up is Lars. He works out in my backyard. Would be a breath of fresh air. And if he fails, then you could always count on cookie butter. He dances downtown. <laughs> Made sense earlier this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> but again, could I handle the responsibility of being king? When I was 10, my parents bought me a goldfish for my birthday and it was dead before I blew out the candles. <laughs> but I know that. Rather than trying to split us up, it's my role to keep us all together through laughter, humor, and my good looks. I offer all the pomp and splendor of the great royal families, but with less hemophilia. <laughs> and I'll start unifying by saying that Brian Stelter isn't worse than Osama bin Laden. The only thing he's ever destroyed is a Golden Corral bathroom. <laughs> Let's welcome tonight's guests! She's the reason Jim Acosta's therapist is driving a new seven series, former senior counselor to President Trump, Kellyanne Conway! <laughs> He's the reason we're told to mind our elders. Host of The Larry Elder Show and executive producer of Uncle Tom Part 2, Larry Elder. Yes. Place to the crowd. He's the only comic who has clubs pay him in canned goods. Actor, writer, and comedian Jamie Lissau. She's back from her honeymoon, but we've yet to find her husband. Fox News contributor, Cat Tim. <laughs> Kellyanne, so much to cover with this brilliant monologue that I put together all by myself. But I want to ask you first, who is a bigger bozo, Stelter and Chuck Todd? Uh, at this point, both of the above, just for equating January 6th with 9-11, there's no better evidence that somebody is affected by Trump derangement syndrome that when they do that. Imagine, Greg, being a 20-year-old 
kid who identifies himself as a Republican, maybe even has a red hat that says Make America Great Again, and you listen to people on the TV talk about the folks who killed a parent you never met mm -hmm. 21 years ago, and now equates you with the people who killed your parent that you never met. So al-Baghdadi, Soleimani, the people who raped and murdered Kayla Mueller, the people who beheaded Daniel Pearl, you don't equate half of America to these folks based on what they believe and who they are. It's, it started out as elitism and snobbery, mm -hmm. but now it's becoming increasingly dangerous. And people are, they're not gonna put up with that. And to have the Vice President of the United States be complicit in it is- Mallorca is, too. Is, is truly regrettable. Mallorca too. And I just wanna say this, here in New York, we have about 118 hate crimes against Jewish men since the beginning of this year. Only one spent a moment in jail. Mm -hmm. We have uh, domestic terrorism all around us. We have people, hate crimes, nothing. And, and we don't even hear about it. And to call people terrorists who love the country, who believe that prices are too high, crime is too high, and we're too dependent on foreign dictators because of energy, they don't think Putin should be in Ukraine, just because they believe a certain thing. They want to be left alone raise their kids, worship God as they want to. They don't want to be denigrated and castigated by people in the media and, frankly, the, their own president and vice president. Yeah, it's also working politically for them because they're dealing with low-information voters. Speaking of that, Jamie, <laughs> <laughs> you live in Alaska. Can you see Buckingham Palace from there? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm That's sorry, there's okay. so many. What would you like me to add? What do you make of uh, the, the attacks on the royalty and the attacks? There's a lot, there's a lot there, right? Yes. And I know people are quick to dismiss any similarity between 9-11 and January 6th, but I would bring to your attention that they are both dates. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm wondering if the 4th of July is connected. Um, <laughs> You're just asking questions. I have to say, just because you brought up Brian Stelter, and I mispronounce his name every time I'm on your show, I apologize, I think I say Stelter. Stelter teaching at Harvard, it, it's ridiculous. It's in fear. The only way I support Stelter teaching a class at Harvard is at the, if at the end of every lecture, another guy comes in and goes, okay, don't do any of that. <laughs> that was stupid. It's so, um, it's, I mean, talk about a soft landing for him. It's like they, it's like Brian Stelter landed on another Brian Stelter. <laughs> <laughs> is that possible? And in wow. closing, Greg, I just want to say, I want to say happy birthday. I don't know Thank if you know, I just turned 40 seven years ago. <laughs> How's it going? How's it going? Larry. Uh, Larry, this is your first time on the show. I've been waiting for this wow. forever. It's good yeah. to see you. Say hello to the black face of white supremacy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> don't laugh. I worked hard for that title. I'm the uh, black face of BLM. <laughs> we didn't know that, did you? Yeah. I don't even know if that made sense, but that made sense. What do you make of the? What do you make of this? Uh, I, I, and this kind of horrible relativism. Uh, is it purely a political act, and is it working? Uh, you know, when somebody on the View, I think it was Sonny Hostins, mm -hmm. even she said, "You know, for years I've been saying that Donald Trump was illegitimate. I shouldn't have said it." Right. And the reason she did that is because finally they're realizing their hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. Al Gore will still tell you that uh, the Supreme Court put George W. Bush in the White House. For four years, the entirety of President Trump's presidency, Hillary referred to him as illegitimate and the election stolen. Uh, Stacey Abrams still claims that 2018, her gubernatorial election in Georgia was stolen. Uh, when um, Kamala Harris was on Charlemagne the God, Charlemagne the God, not too arrogant. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought Trump had an ego. Uh, <laughs> she agreed with him when he referred to uh, Trump as illegitimate. So they've been saying it for years. Nobody shuts them down. Nobody cancels them. Nobody shuts down their, their social media platforms for spreading the so-called big lie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a good point. Kat, how you doing? Great. Yeah, yeah. Did you enjoy your honeymoon? I did enjoy it. We had a lot of fun, but I also think it's good I'm back to work. Right. Because, like, usually five nights a week I get attention from, like, a, a whole audience. And then when that's gone and it's just me and one husband, like... Put the, <laughs> what a let as, a, as opposed to Puts two. a lot of pressure on that guy.
What uh, of the uh, many elements of this monologue, what struck you as in interesting or important? Your birthday. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me Happy why. Happy birthday, thank and I got you the greatest present of all. What me. You? Oh, sweet. <laughs> I'm back. Yes. Uh, I don't know. I mean, the, the stel I kind of want to take the Stelter class. Yes. I want to go. Good and idea. Just sit there. Good can idea. I go you and just sit it. there and just, hey, like, what can I? Learn from you as an employed person. <laughs> <laughs> With high ratings. <laughs> it's so funny. He got fired for doing a terrible job right. in journalism, so they're hiring him to do exactly the same thing. Do you think he's actually going to explore real threats to democracy? It's only going to be about so-called domestic terrorism wearing red caps. I, yeah, I, but I'm going to go find out. Yeah, I think you should. And who could stop you, really? No. Not that guy. No. You know, Harvard... Um, <laughs> Harvard accepts roughly 5% of its applicants every year, and they seem to accept 100% of the cast. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bill de Blasio, Brian Stelter, there have been others. Yeah. And, and they, and, they go, go there, and they're given the imprimatur of Harvard, well, I, I and think... somehow it's meant to wash away their biases and, their, and the fact that they don't have, as all these other late-night mm -hmm. comedians... Well, I, I think funny he's, qual he's qualified, your ratings. Kellyanne. I mean, after all, he's the guy that said the Hunter Biden story was Russian disinformation. Mm -hmm. And then after it turned out it wasn't, he denied that he said it was Russian disinformation. He's eminently qualified. Yeah. Yeah. I just love that they're letting him sit there while he figures out his next career move. That's going to take a while. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.